The first circuit you will build is shown in Figure 1 and contains two fixed resistors and a variable resistor. You will use the decade box to adjust the value of the variable resistor. Start by setting up the circuit as shown in the figure. Then insert the DMM to measure the current and the voltage. You will need to break the circuit to insert the ammeter to measure current. Remember, to measure the correct direction of current, you need to think about setting the meter so that the current enters the red port of the ammeter. The current will go through the meter and then connect the black lead to the circuit. The voltmeter can then be connected in parallel, so this can be set up afterwards without disrupting the circuit. When you are preparing to take a lot of data, it's a good idea to check one data point to verify that the circuit and the DMMs are set up correctly. Check the data point that you calculated in the prelab, where you set R equal to 10 kilo ohms. Once you're sure the measurement system is set up correctly, you can quickly collect the measured values of Vx and Ix. Plot the value of Vx versus R on the semi-log paper provided. Notice that the orientation of the graph paper is so that the scale is compressed towards the right side of the paper following the logarithmic function. Also plot the data for Ix on the same graph using the x-axis in common. Finally, compute the power by multiplying Vx and Ix and plot this on the same paper. You will have to choose a new y-axis and indicate which graph belongs to the voltage and the current with some type of legend. What you should find is that as the resistance increases, voltage increases, but the current decreases. The power will peak somewhere in the middle. In part 2.2, you will set up the circuit of figure 3. This circuit has two voltage sources. Use the plus 6 voltage source for the constant voltage on the left, and use the dual power to supply to set up the variable voltage source on the right. When setting up the circuit, it's much easier to set up the circuit to look like the figure as much as possible, and then in a later step, add the current meter in series and the volt meter in parallel. Now you're going to measure the voltage and the current at the same time. Before collecting all your data, check that the data point where Vs is set to 10 volts is the correct value. Once you have verified that this test point is correct by comparing your measured value to the prelab, collect the rest of your data. Be sure to flip the polarity or use the minus 25 volt source for the values of Vs which are less than zero. By examining the formula from the prelab, we expect the current Ix to vary linearly as Vs is varied. So plot this on a linear graph that you sketch by hand in your lab notebook. The last part in the lab requires you to set up a more complicated circuit as shown in Figure 4. It's best to set up the circuit without any meters first and make it look like the schematic as much as possible. Spread out the components to make inserting the meters easier. Double check that you have the 3 volt source connected correctly. The red lead should be connected to the terminal marked with a positive on the left, and the black lead should be connected to the negative terminal on the right. Since the voltage measurements do not require you to break the circuit, then it's probably a good idea to make all the voltage measurements first. Pay attention to the polarity of the measurement. For example, a node voltage 
is always measured with respect to the ground node. So place the red lead at the node that you're measuring and place the black lead at the bottom node which is marked as the reference or the ground node in the schematic. When measuring voltage across the 100 kilo ohm resistor, pay attention to the correct polarity. You will break the circuit to measure the currents. Remember to place the ammeter such that the current in the direction of the arrow enters the red lead. Usually there is more than one place you can measure the current, so pick a convenient measurement point, one where only a few things are connected. Break the circuit, insert the meter, and be sure to connect the black lead back to the circuit to continue the flow of the current. In your analysis, you should sum the currents leaving the supernode outlined with a dashed line. That is currents IA plus IB plus IC plus ID should sum to zero. For the pre-lab exercises, you should analyze the circuits of figures 1 and 2. In each case, you need to determine the formula that predicts the value of voltage and current as a function of the independent variable. That is, you want to report an equation with the dependent variable on the left and any constants and independent variables on the right-hand side of an equation. For example, in the circuit of figure 1, the independent variable is the resistance R. The dependent variable is either Vx or Ix. Vx and Ix depend on the value of R. The rest of the constants can be simplified so that you can quickly calculate values of Vx and Ix for any value of R.